Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at creating these fantasy type paintings. And uh, as soon as we go through all the steps that you need to know how to actually create, we're going to create this exact painting here. Once you learn how to actually do it, it really isn't super difficult. It can be time time consuming, excuse me. But, you know, it's really kind of like a labor of love. It's very uh interesting. It's a whole lot of fun to do and uh you know, you can use use these paintings for all kinds of things, portfolio pieces, uh, you can cut website headers out of them, you can just display them, show them off to people, and uh, hey, they're a whole lot of fun to do. Now, before we actually get started making this, I do have to let you in on two little secrets. Number one is that really, realistically, if you want this to go somewhat easily for you, you will need a tablet. Now, the good news is you can pick up a tablet for about, you know, a decent tablet for still, I believe, at this point in time, uh, under $100. Now, you, you could do this with a mouse, but it's going to be very difficult, and it's going to be much less enjoyable. It's going to be much, you know, more difficult, and hey, it will make your life a whole lot easier, and it'll make the whole process go much faster if you have a tablet. And secondly, I will be using some brushes here. I like to get brushes from this site, brushease.com. That's brush, double E, Z, Y, dot com. They have all kinds of great free brushes. And the brushes that we will be using in this video, I have bookmarked here. It's this brush pack called Suddenly Spring. You can just download it, unzip it, and save it to anywhere you like on your hard drive. I will show you how to uh, get that open in Photoshop without having to worry about it being in the specific Photoshop uh, brushes folder. And the other brush pack we're going to use is this Grass Brushes brush pack. Both brush packs are free and available for you to download at any time. So once you have those downloaded, let's begin our painting here. I am going to close this file and bring my palettes and panels and toolbox back and I'm going to create a new file. File new. I'm going to name this Fantasy Art and I'm going to set the width. I'm going to create this fairly large. I like to create all of my paintings large because when you create something in Photoshop you can only really scale it down. You try to scale it up, you're going to lose quality. So I'm going to set the width to 1600 pixels and I'm going to set the height to 1200. That's a pretty big file. I'm going to set the resolution to 300 pixels per inch. Make sure you have some color in there. Set the color mode to RGB. And the background contents can be white. We will take care of switching all of that stuff later on. Hit OK. And here is our document. Now before we get started, I'm just going to pop over to Bridge real quick. And you can see here I've got my two brush packs. They're just .abr files. This is not the Photoshop folder. This is a folder that I've named Fantasy Photo. And I also have the silhouette of this woman standing there, which we're going to incorporate into our finished product when we get to that point. So really that's all you're going to need are those brush packs. This person is kind of optional. You can really trace anything you want. It could be a truck, it could be you know a guy, it could be a woman, it could be anything. Alright, just a silhouette figure is what I've got there. So, I'm going to go back to Photoshop. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a new layer. I'm going to collapse my info palette here to give us maximum room here on our layers palette because I'm going to right click and choose large thumbnails so you can see more easily what I'm working with. I also will actually drag these palettes or these panels, I should say, that we're not using, like layer comps. And I'm going to close some of this stuff up. So just drag that off, close it. We are going to be using the brushes panel, so I'm going to leave that there. And uh, history panel, I'll leave that. And that's about it. Kind of clean up the workspace a little bit. And we can pull our layers panel out this way just a little bit more, just so we can see the name of our layers. Just gives us a little bit more space, really see what we're working with uh, more easily. So, first up, select the Create New Layer button to create a new layer. Double click the name, make sure you double click the name, otherwise you open the Layer Styles panel, which by the way, you will notice me doing 
all of the time because I frequently just miss a letter or whatever little hit area is in there that I need to double click. We're gonna name this layer Sky. Now hit Control A. If you're using a Macintosh computer, that is Command A. That selects the entire stage. By the way, notice this is not the full size of our painting. You can see that we're at 33% of the actual size. So if I zoom this in, it gets quite a bit larger than this. So don't worry about that. I just have it zoomed down so I can fit it on my screen here. Now grab the gradient tool and we want to create a brand new gradient. Double click on this little color spectrum right up here and select black to white. Now double click on the black color stop and I've got some hexadecimal codes for you. If you don't know what hexadecimal codes are, the hexadecimal code is simply the six digit letter and number code that is assigned to every single color. And there's actually a way that it works. You can actually read hexadecimal codes if you know what the various numbers and letters stand for. But we're not going to get into that here or now. The first color we need is 0, 0, 0, 6, or whoops, four zeros, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 7. It's a very dark, dark blue. Hit OK. You can see that's there on the color stop. Double click the other color stop. And the hexadecimal code for this side is 6, 7, 0, 0, 6, 1. And you can see that's a very deep pink color. Hit OK and select OK in the gradient editor. Now we want to make sure we're using a linear gradient. Make sure your mode is set to normal. And we're just going to drag right down from the top. And there we go. We have this very blue at the top and this very pink at the bottom. I'm actually going to undo that gradient because our horizon is somewhere right around two thirds of the way down, maybe more like half of the way down the photo. So I just want to drag the gradient from the top to about halfway down the photo. Or why am I calling it a photo? drawing or document. That's really what I should call it. So there is the background color of the sky. Go up to select, deselect to deselect that uh, selection. All right, create a new layer. We are going to create a specific brush. Beside those brushes we downloaded, we're going to create our own clouds brush. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's create a new layer. We don't really think of this a name because we're going to be deleting this later on anyway. Go up to filter, render, clouds. Just rendered a bunch of clouds for that layer. Well, you know what, actually, we're going to use different clouds. So set your foreground color to black. I just clicked on the black color swatch and just make sure it's solid black. And just go edit, fill, and choose use foreground color. Select OK. There we go, just solid black. With different clouds, you just need something in there, and I don't want those other clouds there because it would really start making it kind of funky. Then go filter, render, difference clouds. And uh, hit Command or Control F. Depends on whether or not you're using a Mac or a computer there. Command, Control. And uh, that applies difference clouds again. I'm going to do it several times until I'm starting to sort of see almost a 3D look. You can see it looks like this is closer and these here are a little bit closer. You can see my cursor. These here are a little bit closer. Maybe these. So I am I can sort of see how I could take a cloud out of these different clouds and use it as my brush. So I'm going to leave this pattern I have here. Basically just cycle through till you see something you like. Because you most certainly are not going to get uh, the same exact thing I have here. Alright, next go image adjustments levels. And let's drag the black slider here in. Okay, you can see how we're getting rid of a lot of those shadows. We're just dropping them right through to black. And let's increase our whites. Now our cloud areas or our little bunches of white that we're going to end up cutting our cloud from are really starting to turn into their own shapes, more or less sitting on a black background. Then grab the gray slider and push it toward the white. All right, you don't want to, or you want to be sure not to get rid of too much of the edge of your cloud. I think I'm going to use this one right over here, which is why I'm signaling that one out as I explain this to you. Hit OK. All right, now we need to find an easy way to select all of the black back there. We're going to go select color range. Now I'm going to make sure I'm selecting sampled colors, and I'm just going to click on the blacks back there. And I'm going to increase my fuzziness to, I don't know, somewhere between 150. We'll just stick with 200. Hit OK. And we have now selected all the blacks. Now what we can do is, well, before we delete it, I would like to kind of feather the edge of my selection. So there are a couple ways we can do this. If you are using Photoshop CS3, you can go up here to Select, 
and hit Refine Edge, which I'm going to use in just a moment. However, if you're not using CS3, all we're going to be doing in the Refine Edge dialog is feathering the edge. So you can come here to Feather and just follow along. I happen to like using the Refine Edge dialog because it shows you what you're going to get before you get it. I'm going to choose to view this on a black background, or excuse me, a white background. And I'm just going to set my contract expand to zero. I'm going to set my radius to right around three, contrast at zero, smooth at zero, and I'm going to give this about 10 pixels of feather, just like that. You can see it's going to feather that edge pretty nicely. I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. Now I can just hit the delete key. And I've just knocked out all of the black, so we just have these sort of cloud looking shapes left. Very nice. Now we're actually going to use the lasso tool right there. And I'm just going to select this cloud that I kind of singled out before. And I'm going to grab the move tool and I'm going to move it right over into here. And I'm going to go select, deselect. By the way, the hotkey, which I'm going to be using quite often, is control D. If you're using a Macintosh, that's command D. Deselect. Grab the lasso tool again, and let's grab another piece of a cloud like this. Whoops. <laughs> like this little piece over here. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned, my lasso tool is set to 40 pixels of feathering. Grab the move tool again. We're going to move this right over in here. Basically, I'm almost creating my own little cloud. Command or Control D to deselect that. And I'm going to grab another piece of this. Ooh, let's just take this little guy right here and move him right over, right underneath there. Command or Control D to deselect. And it doesn't quite look right yet, so let's just grab a chunk of this cloud. Or that, not a cloud yet, that bit of gray and white and move it over. So there we go. We've got this nice becomings of a cloud in the center of our screen. Grab the lasso tool. Remember, leave that feather at 40. And just make a rough selection around it. Err on the side of selecting on the inside of the edge of the cloud rather than selecting too much outside of it. And go select inverse. This just inverts the selection. Now you can hit delete and it gets rid of all of that other stuff. That's great. You can hit delete actually one more time just to really soften up the edges of our cloud here. I'm actually going to make another little tiny selection in the middle and it's going to tell me that no pixels more than 50% selected, so the selection edges will not be visible. I'm just going to hit OK, and I'm just going to hit Delete once, maybe twice, just like that. And you can see it's knocking out the center of my cloud. Now, I don't see the edges of my selection, but I know the selection's there, so I'm going to go Select, Deselect. There we go. All right, so now we kind of have our cloud. I'm going to get rid of all this feather here, just set that back to zero. And I'm going to run a selection right around that cloud shape and make sure that you shut off both your background or any other layers for that matter that you have open or turned on. So I'm just going to alt double click my background layer just holding on the alt key that would be option if you're on the Mac and I'm just going to shut both of them off. Alright you can hardly see the cloud now that's fine. We've got our selection around it. Go edit define brush preset although before we do that make sure you're on the correct layer. So I'm up here on layer one we've got our cloud there. Edit Define brush preset. And you can see it shows us a little sample of our brush, and we're just going to call this thing clouds. Hit OK. Now you can just delete that layer. We've got our brush. It's over here in our brushes panel. And I'm going to deselect that selection and turn my sky back on. Okay, now before we actually start uh, burning our sky and really texturing the sky, I highly suggest that you save your file someplace on your hard drive. So I'll just come up here, File, Save As, and I'm going to save mine right into here. Save. It already exists. I do want to replace it. And there we go. Just to err on the safe side. Okay. Create a new layer. Name it Burn 1. Burn 1. We're going to have numerous burn layers, but for now, just Burn 1. And then grab the Brush tool and open up the Brushes panel. That would be Window Brushes. What we want to do is grab our brush preset which should be tucked in here somewhere. Oh, here it is. And I'm going to use this now to, well I'm going to double click this real quick just to collapse my brushes panel. And I'm going to use this to start burning in the sky. So let me just get over to my tablet real quick. Now with this brush I do want to make a couple changes so I'm actually going to double click this brushes panel. Back open, I do want to add shape dynamics. Now if you have a tablet 
you can set this to pen pressure and we've got a nice little size jitter going on. We're going to apply an angle jitter. I am not going to turn control to that on, however. And a minimum diameter, we can pop, pop that up to 10 or actually maybe like 20, 25% because I'm using the pen. I don't want to have to shove too, too hard. And then we can apply a little bit of scattering. However, I don't want to do that actually come to think of it. So no, no scattering, just shape dynamics. And we're size jitter goes up to 100%, minimum diameter 25, angle at about 40 to 50%. Collapse the brushes panel. I want to make this brush head a bit smaller, so I'm going to use my bracket keys. That's right there to the right of your P key. And just hit the left one to make it become a little smaller, and the right one makes it larger. So I'm just bearing in mind that my horizon is going to run somewhere across the middle of my screen, something like this. So what I'm going to do, well, I just realized something else I need to do. Come into brush tip shape and increase the spacing a little bit. All right, maybe around 50%. That's nice. And we can up the brush tip size a little bit, excuse me. About 300 pixels is working for me. Obviously your cloud may be a little bit different. So basically just start burning in the edges of the sky here. We're just going around the edges here and we're gonna kind of burn them in. And if you're having trouble with it, you may find it easier to come here to Shape Dynamics and just shut control off and I'll show you. You see that might give you something more uniform, maybe something more like you're looking for. But actually now that I do that, I realize that I need to size down my brush shape. So I'm going to use that bracket key. And I'm just going to go around here and just burn it in. Just like that. Now I'm going to set this layer to soft light. You see it's going to really tone it down quite a bit. I'm going to create another new layer and double click on those letters and I'm going to name this burn 2. Oops. Make sure you spell burn correctly. Burn 2. And again, I'm just going to burn in these edges. I'm going to focus more on the corners here in this layer. Along that top there, it looks like it kind of missed. And again, up there in that corner, don't worry about it being too too uniform. We're just basically texturing the sky a little bit. And we're going to set this layer to soft light as well. Maybe reduce the opacity a little. We can come back and fine tune it later on. If we realize the opacity actually needs to come up, that's fine too. Create another new layer. And we're going to name this layer clouds. Our spelling is having a rough time today. There we go, clouds. And I'm going to, again, reduce my brush size just a little bit. And I'm actually going to zoom in one. I'm going to hit Command or Control Plus just to zoom me in to 50%. Move my brushes up there. And I'm going to sample the dark blue here using my eyedropper tool. I'm going to sample this dark blue here on our background. And I just clicked. And I'm going to double click now the little color swatch. And I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. Just a little bit. Just about maybe like that. Hit OK. And grab the brush tool once again. And now we're just going to paint a couple cloud shapes. So just slowly paint in some shapes. All right. It's not too bad for the first cloud. And then I'm going to paint a second cloud over here. Just like that. This cloud may be a little large. I'm just going to go grab the eraser tool here and erase the whole thing and restart just so I don't mess up any of my edges. I'm going to grab the brush tool again and redraw that cloud. Maybe more like this. All right, that's not too, too bad. Kind of liking that. Maybe put a little cloud out there. Okay, so there we've created our clouds and they are sitting on the appropriate layer. So that is good. All right, create another new layer, new layer button and name this one clouds shadow. 
And what we're going to do here is, well, first off, set black as your foreground color. Hit OK. Using that same clouds brush, we're just going to run some black along the bottom of these clouds, just like this. Don't worry that you're not just staying on the bottom of the cloud. Make it much smaller for that small cloud there. Right, just like that. And just slightly bigger for this cloud sitting sort of back off here in the background. Don't want that last brush stroke. Just like that. Now you can see it's not completely all on the cloud. That's fine. Hold down your Alt key. If you're on a Mac, that's Option. And as you roll your mouse over the border of the cloud shadow and the clouds layer, you'll notice you get a little change of cursor. Click that, and it clips the layer on top to the layer on the bottom. That's wonderful. Now we just need to reduce the opacity of this layer to, oh, let's try around 60%. That looks pretty good. All right, create another new layer and call this layer Clouds Shadowing. And we're going to reduce the size of our clouds brush pretty drastically. I'm down to around 30 pixels or so, 30 pixels right now. And basically, I'm going to reduce my flow too. I'm just going to take my flow down to about 70, around 70% is fine. And I'm just going to start painting some defining lines into our cloud. Oops, I don't want that to start to give the clouds a 3D look. So I'm just going to paint in wherever I think will look pretty good. Just like that. And then for this little one down here, we're just going to put a small one right there. And then for this cloud up here, I'm just going to paint this and put a little shadow there maybe and a little bit of shadowing back there. Just a little bit right up there. And then this layer, we are going to reduce the opacity. Ooh, let's try 40, maybe a little lower. Let's try about 30. That's pretty well where we want it. Now we are going to clip this to our layer. Now when I clip a second layer, it is going to just clip it to these clouds as well. We don't have to worry about it suddenly disappearing because it's not going to clip itself to our cloud shadow layer, but rather it's going to clip it to these clouds. So that's fine. So we're just going to clip it. And there we go. Looks very nice. Oops. I just upped the opacity back to 100, so I'm just going to punch in 30 once again. Select outside the layers panel so we don't do that again. Command or Control S to just save our file so we don't lose our work. So now, select the sky layer and we need to create two new layers beneath or yeah, beneath the, all these burn layers but above the sky layer. So hit the new layer icon twice. Whoops. There we go, I hit it three times. Drag that one to the trash can. And name this one on top, star two. And the one on bottom, star one. Or the other way around, if you see fit. Now, fill this layer with black. You can fill with the foreground color if you don't know already by just hitting Option Delete or Alt Backspace. If you're on PC, that's Alt Backspace. And up here on star two, we also want to fill that with black. So Alt Backspace or Option Delete if you're on the Mac. Select star 1 and come up here to Filter and go Render, Lens Flare. Now I'm going to select 105 millimeter prime and I'm going to reduce the brightness to somewhere around 70 or 80, really doesn't matter. And I'm just going to position it about where I think it will fall, so it'll be falling behind this cloud right here. Select OK and we can't see anything because it is being covered by this star 2 layer. If we uncover that, we can see that we got it pretty close, not quite as close as I'd like it. Don't worry, we will adjust it. Turn star 2 layer on and go up to star 2 layer. Go filter, render, lens flare. And I will make this one significantly smaller, maybe close to half the size, right around 40. And I'm going to move it right over to here. You can just click anywhere on this black and it will place that lens flare right there where you selected it or where you select it. Hit OK to place that and we can see we're slightly off there as well. Don't worry about that. Switch this blend mode to screen and with the move tool grab that lens flare and just move it up so it's right behind the cloud. Just maybe sort of sticking out of the top. Use your arrow keys to fine tune adjust it if need be. Now I'm going to come over here to this other lens flare. Make sure you select the star one layer that that lens flare is on. Set that to screen blend mode as well and move this up behind that cloud. So if I zoom out here, you can see that we've got one lens flare behind this cloud and one behind that cloud. 
pretty much how I envisioned it. So let's create that sun or that planet uh, that we saw sitting there in the finished painting. Select the sky layer and create one new layer right on top of that. And let's name this, let's just name it planet. Enter. And grab the elliptical marquee tool, hold the shift key and draw a perfect circle. Hold the alt key to draw a perfect circle out from the center, which is about what I want. I want something about that big. Before you let go of everything, hold the space key and we can just move this right over where we want it. I want it right about here. And I'm going to let go with the space key, let go with my mouse, and then let go with shift and alt or shift and option if you are using a Mac. All right, now if you're using CS3, you can come up here and select refine edge. Again, we're just going to be using refine edge to feather the edge. So you can go up to select and hit feather. In this case, I'm going to feather the edge. Ooh, let's try 50 pixels. And I want to expand that edge actually, now that I can see what it's doing. So I'm going to expand it about plus 71. That looks pretty good. I'm just going to hit OK. Or maybe increase the radius to 3. Hit OK. And here is our selection. Now we're going to fill the selection with a very light, kind of buttery yellow. So I'm going to hit my foreground color over here. And I'm going to move my hue slider to the yellows. And I'm going to choose a very light yellow, kind of like that. Hit OK. And then just Alt Backspace. Again, if you're on the Mac, that's Option Delete. There we go. We have just filled our shape with yellow. Now that shape is actually a bit too big. So I'm on the planet layer. I'm going to hit Edit, Transform, and Scale. Or I can just select Free Transform. And then holding Shift and Alt, I'm going to drag one of these corner anchors in a little bit. And position it right about there. That's pretty good. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Hit enter to commit those changes, and there we go. We have the very first step of our own planet. Let's add some texture to this planet. Create a new layer. Let's name it, uh, oh, there goes the layer styles again. Name it uh, Planet Text, for texture, that is. And we're just going to fill this layer with Render Clouds. And you can see that the clouds kind of went crazy on us. That is because our foreground color is yellow. So I'm going to undo that, edit undo. And I'm going to hit the D key, which restores default colors, which, by the way, are black and white. Now I'm going to go filter and just select clouds. There we go. We've got some clouds here. I'm going to hold the Alt key, or the Option key, if I was using a Mac. And I'm going to select the eyeball of this clouds layer. That shuts off all the other layers except that layer. This is because I need to go Image, Adjustments, Levels, and increase the black quite a bit, and increase the white quite a bit. We're basically going to drag them all the way into the center here. So we get some nice hard-edged shapes. Just like that, hit OK. And I can select either the whites or the blacks. I can just use the magic, tragic wand, and select the blacks there, and delete them. Delete. And actually, I'm going to deselect now, select, deselect, and I'm just going to hit Command or Control I. That inverts the color, so all that stuff that was just white, well, as you can see, it is now black. That's perfect because we want these shapes to be kind of distinguishable on the surface of our little planet. Hold the Alt or Option key and select that eyeball again to turn our layers back on. Now, go Edit, Free Transform. I have that planet texture layer selected and I'm just going to scale this whole texture down just so it's more appropriately sized for the size of our planet. Hit enter to commit those changes. Now we are going to clip this to the planet layer. However, before we do that, I'm going to hold down the control key, that'd be command if I was using a Mac, and click the thumbnail of the planet layer. That selects the planet, okay, or puts a selection around the planet. However, I am still on the planet te texture layer. Here I go calling it planet text, the planet texture layer. I'm going to come up here to filter now and go distort, spherize. And I'm just going to set this to, you can set anywhere from 40 to 80 to 100, whatever you want. Just, you don't want to put negative. You want to make sure it's in the positives and it's at the higher end of the positives. So hit OK. And we've just bulged out our texture to make it look more like it is sitting on a globe. And now we're going to deselect. Control D, that'd be Command D if I was on a Mac. Now I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and select the border of these two layers to clip that planet texture to my planet, just like that. Now that planet texture, you can reduce the opacity to, oh, let's try five, 
Five is a little low. Let's try it. Eight, maybe. No, not 80. <laughs> I want eight. Eight's pretty good. We're going to stick with eight for now. And just make sure we have these selected. Select outside somewhere outside of your layers panel. So there we have the very beginning of our planet. We've got some burning in the sky and some clouds. This is the very first part of creating our composition. Okay, so the next step, we have to create a new layer. We're going to create this layer right here above the planet texture layer. So just hit new layer. And we're going to double click on the name and we're going to name this light line. I'm going to zoom in here to about 66%. And what, well actually I'm going to zoom, keep it at 50% so I can kind of get an idea of how big I'm making this line here. I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to open up my brushes panel. I'm going to deselect shape dynamics. I'm going to choose brush tip shape. And I'm going to come all the way up here to the top and just select the one pixel hard edged basic brush. Double click that bar to collapse the brushes panel. Now, my cursor has disappeared. You probably cannot see it. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click right about where the horizon line is. And if you can imagine the horizon, well, as I mentioned before, is going to run somewhere across here. Somewhere right around through here. So I want to make my first light line coming from the center of the planet going here toward the left at about the horizon line. So I'm going to grab my brush tool. I'm just using a mouse here. And I'm just going to click in the center of the planet. However, I want to make sure that my foreground color is a nice light yellow, just like the planet is. Just like that. Hit OK. Select somewhere in the middle of the planet and hold down the Shift key and just click somewhere way out here. And we just drew our first light line, even though it is probably practically invisible unless you are following along and doing this along with me. Hit Command or Control J to duplicate that layer. Now the light line is starting to appear. Hit Command or Control E to merge those layers. And hit Command or Control J again to duplicate those layers a second time. Command or Control E to duplicate them, or to merge them, excuse me. Now we're going to take this one kind of triple light line here. And I am going to transform it a little bit. I'm just going to zoom in here. And, well, first thing I need to do is duplicate that layer again. And now go Edit, Free Transform. Now, the first thing I need to do is see this little box right up here at the top left? I need to set my transform point to the bottom right-hand corner. That way, when I come over here and edit the angle, the whole line will rotate out of that corner. So I'm going to rotate it up about 10 degrees, just like that. Press check. You can see there it is rotated up about 10 degrees, or 10 degrees according to our uh, free transform. So I'm going to duplicate that, Command or Control J, and I'm going to free transform this. Command or Control T. Again, set that transform point to the bottom right hand corner and rotate this 10 degrees. Select the check, and now we have another light line. All right, I'm going to pause this video and I'm just going to finish these. Basically, I'm going to take them so that they're wrapping all the way around to the other side of the planet, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am finished, and as you can see, we have quite a few lines here coming out of our planet. What I want to do is select the top one, and this will work as long as you're using CS2 or CS3. You can select multiple layers. We scroll all the way down, hold down my Shift key, and select the first light line layer. And I'm just going to merge them all into one layer. So I'm going to come up here to Layer and Merge Layers. Now, if you are using CS, all you have to do is select that top layer and come up here to Layer and choose Merge Down, I believe is what it is. And it will merge that layer with the layer beneath it. So you just have to keep tapping that a couple times. And then all of your layers will be merged into one light line layer, just like that. Now I want to apply a layer mask to this layer. Choose the Layer Mask button. And I'm going to zoom in on my planet. I'm going to grab my brush tool, open up my brushes panel. And I'm going to grab the 100 pixel soft edge brush. And you know, we'll use a 300 pixel and uh, decrease it to about 175 ish. And with black as my foreground color, I am simply going to paint over the planet in black. That will make those lines of light disappear from actually running over the planet itself, which is fine. And then I'm going to use my left bracket key to size this brush down. And I'm going to shorten the length of some of these light. Uh, lines. And the one thing I'm going to do to all of them is just apply 
you know, just put a little bit of black at the edge just to make kind of a soft drop off as far as our line is concerned. So there we go, that looks pretty good. Just like that, we've got some nice little lines coming out of there. Now we need to create another new layer. This layer is going to go right behind the clouds layer. So select the clouds layer, hold the control key. If you're on a Mac, that would be command and select create new layer. That creates a new layer behind or underneath whatever layer you had selected. I'm gonna double click that layer and we're gonna name this uh, back light, just like that. Now I'm going to open up my brushes panel. I'm gonna grab that clouds brush we created right there. I'm gonna set some shape dynamics to it. Just checking shape dynamics, it gets us back to where we were with size jitter, minimum diameter, which I can now reduce a little bit actually, and the angle jitter. Double click that to close that up. All right, let's size this brush down a little bit. And grab the eyedropper and so make sure you have a light yellow selected that just pick it right off of the planet. All right, you can see I've got one selected here. I'm gonna hit B, which is the hotkey for my brush tool. And now because I'm behind these clouds, when I paint behind them, I'm just basically gonna paint a little backlit area behind these clouds, just like this. And then right behind that little one, it's kind of happening there. And then just on this part of this cloud here, because that's about all that would be affected there by that giant planet. Now what I need to do is reduce the opacity of this layer pretty significantly. Let's reduce it to about 35. And I can tell right now that that is just too much of that showing. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool and I'm just going to draw a big selection around it. And I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm just going to use my arrow keys. I'm going to nudge the whole thing down a little bit to kind of tuck it behind that cloud more. Select, deselect. And it's nicely tucked behind the cloud. And this cloud is doing fine here. So there we go. We just got our backlighting set up. Now let's create another layer right here on top of this burning. And we're going to name this layer bottom of top. Doesn't really make much sense, but you will see what we're doing in just a second. I'm going to minimize out, or just not minimize out, zoom out to about right here. And I'm going to open up my brushes panel. Make sure you're on the bottom of top layer and you have the brush tool selected. Select brush tips, tip shape and choose a 100 pixel brush and leave the shape dynamics on. What we're going to do here is just simply draw out some yellow across the screen, kind of like this, except that's a little bit too solid. So we're going to kind of space this out by selecting brush tip shape and increase the spacing to until you can pretty well see the individual dots you're laying down. Now you can see, yeah, that's much more like what I was looking for. And make sure you go all the way across the document here because what we're about to do next will kind of require us to have as much of this as we can. Now, hit Command or Control T to free transform it. I'm gonna right click inside of my boundary box here and select perspective. Now what I'm going to do is pull the bottom handle in and the top handle out. I'm going to right click on it again and select free transform. I'm going to hold down my alt key and I'm just going to pull the sides out. I'm going to zoom out one more so I can grab those side handles again. Holding down alt will pull both sides so it stays more uniform. All right, I'm going to make sure I'm using free transform and I'm just going to push the bottom up as well just like that and just hit the enter key. And there we go, we commit those changes. Now I'm gonna move this up to the very top of the screen. I'm actually gonna hit Command or Control T once again, free transform and make it a little bit smaller than that. Something like that. Just running right across the top, hit enter. Control plus to zoom in a little bit more. Okay, let's select that layer and just set that to soft light. All right, doesn't really look like anything's been done, but if you shut that layer off and turn it back on, you can see that it is in fact lightening up the top of our burned in area. This is gonna add more three dimensional effect to our painting. Okay, now we need to create a new layer just above the sky, below everything else. Create a new layer, double click on this, and name it stars. We need to fill this layer with black, so hit D to get our foreground and background color back to black and white and Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill that with black. I'm gonna hit the Alt key again and click the eyeball for that layer to shut off all the rest of the layers. 
and I'm going to go filter, noise, add noise. A couple things here. You want to make sure you have monochromatic checked on, and we're going to use Gaussian or Gaussian as they like to say. Set the amount to around 50% for this document I find works pretty well. You could up it or reduce it a little bit, but we're actually going to kind of perfect the way it looks in just a minute. So just hit OK. Now for this next step, you ought to be zoomed in to 100% of your document, because if not, it just starts acting and looking kind of weird. So go Adjustments, Levels. And we want to increase the amount of blacks, and in doing so, we decrease the amount of whites. And we're going to increase the whites now. And then we're going to shift this gray slider toward the white. I'm going to increase the blacks still some more. And decrease the whites still some more. I'm going to slide that gray slider back toward the middle so we've got some stars that are really bright and some other ones that are not so bright. I'm going to keep sliding this black slider over, get rid of as many stars as possible. And I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. We have a nice star field. Well, we do have one problem, however. That is that it is covering everything else up. So, before we actually reveal everything else, I just want to duplicate this layer, drag it down on top of, and drop it on top of the new layer button. There we go, stars copy. And come up here to select color range. However, before I get into color range, I'm just gonna zoom in to 100% again. Grab color range and select sample colors up here at the top. And we're just gonna click on the black in the background and we are going to reduce our fuzziness a little bit. Right around 50, looks like it's working fine. Hit OK, and we have selected all of the black. I'm going to hit the delete key to knock all that out. There we go, it looks like we've deleted everything over here according to our layer thumbnail, but if we shut off the other stars layer and turn on our sky layer, you can see that we have a bunch of white dots. Now, I'm actually going to turn that sky layer back on because now we're going to apply a layer style to this layer. I'm going to right click on the layer and select blending options. Here the layer styles dialog boxes. Choose outer glow and set the blend mode to normal. Set the opacity to 100. Set the color to white. And now we're going to play around with the spread. Let's try setting a spread of about 5 and a size of, oh, let's try 10. Okay, you can see it gives us really interesting effect. Let's try reducing the size to maybe 8. Yeah, I don't like that as much. You can see it's gotten rid of most of the effect. Let's stick with 10. That looks pretty good. Maybe increase the spread a little. Bring the spread up to around 7 or 8. And these are our settings. Now choose OK. Now that we have the, that blur, we need to somehow disconnect the blur from this stars layer. And we can do that by coming up here to layer, going layer style, and create layer. That converts that outer glow to its own layer. You can see now here's the outer glow, here are the stars. Outer glow, stars. That's just what we want. 